and spiritual caregiver. So I'm just putting them together right now, okay? This is what, what that person would need to be. That person would have to listen to be the interpreter of stories. Got to listen to interpret that story, what this person is saying. I didn't say add to it, but say something like, um, what I hear you saying is, da 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 Am I hearing you right? Then you'll know whether or not you've interpreted the story, okay? Or help me with my interpretation. I want to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. It sounds like da 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 What I think I heard was, you are to listen to be the interpreter of the story. That's what you're being trained to do. It is your duty to make the feelings that people have, the powerful feelings that they have, more meaningful. Even if that powerful feeling is that of dread. Oh, I dread waking up tomorrow. I dread. Now, initially, you might feel uncomfortable with that <laughs> because they might be telling you they want to commit suicide. And I'm telling you, working with people who, you know, want to commit suicide is very challenging. It is very, very challenging um, at any age, I would say. Um, so make powerful feelings more manageable. So how do they manage this feeling of, I want to die? mean when you say you want to die? What's, you know, one young lady wanted to die because she was in a car accident and her friend sitting beside her was killed, but she survived. Her powerful feeling was, I want to die. Why am I still here and my friend is dead? So you have to manage that. And again, there's no one way to do it, so I can't stand here and tell you, this is how you do it. <laughs> I can give you all the tools that I'm giving you today, and I know that Dr. Wallace gives you many tools. You read a lot of things. Hey, once you get in the room, or once they come into your office, it's on. It's, there's no cookie cutter. You have to take everything that God has given you, that your professors have given you, that your experiences have given you, and you have to listen to this person and see how God wants to work that way. Whether they believe in God or not, whether they're hopeful or not, whether they're dreading, how can this be a meaningful interaction for them? Not for you. Now, it will be for you because you care about every interaction. But it's not about you. How can this be a meaningful interaction for this person? What is it that they need? Because, again, this is the rejecting business. And if you're not prepared to be rejected, you're going to have a hard way to go. Uh, you served as a chaplain. You're a female. Rejection. You served as a chaplain. Chaplain, you're black. Rejection. You served as a chaplain. You're Christian. Rejection. For some people, everything about you, you're a walking rejection. That goes for everybody in this room. I have not had a colleague, no matter what color they were, no matter what age they were, no matter what gender they were, no matter what their religion was, they were rejected. And what we had to learn was, if we take it personally, we won't be able to keep doing this. I had one man to tell me, um, he was going into surgery, and they called the chaplain. Well, I was the only chaplain there, you know. So here I come with myself going down there. And they looked at me, you know. But I'm always prepared for it, because whatever. You know, I know it's going to happen. But so they looked at me, and they said, uh, no, no, no. We called for a priest. They were Catholic, which is, which is fine. We called for a priest. I said, okay. I backed. I said, okay. I said, uh, we have a priest. Um, I just need to make a phone call. Um, he'll come over whenever he can because there's one priest for the whole, you know. And so uh, so I was walking away. They, so the man in the bed said, I'm going into surgery. No, 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 no. She'll do. She'll do. <laughs> Why? Because he hoped that I could get a prayer through. So there is something, a common thread in humanity. And that is thinking about our own morality. You're black until you get sick. You're white until you get sick. You're rich until you get sick. You're poor until you get sick. You're young until you get sick. You're old until you get sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. So for everybody who doesn't want you, someone who really needs 
beats and feels like you are a connection between them and God, and they can talk to God for themselves. God is not a respectful person. God loves us all the same. But in the human mind, of course, and it's true, you represent God in your community. And that's fine. That's okay. That's why they give you such a hard time. <laughs> you know, you represent God in your community. So, somebody's going to want you. For everybody who doesn't, somebody's going to. So, 